Inflation will soon get worse. The EU bans Russian oil, mostly. And Justin Trudeau tries to ban handgun sales in Canada. And more on this week's headlines. America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. A $2 million golden relic was stolen from a New York City church. The relic was an 18 karat gold tabernacle, which is a box used to hold communion items. At the time of the theft, the church was closed for construction. Security camera footage was also stolen. Wow. A mystery involving the church and stolen artifacts? Someone call Robert Langdon. The perpetrators also beheaded a statue of an angel. This shows it to be a crime of passion as well as profit. Who might cry when angels deserve to die? Put out an APB on System of a Down. They may be in disguise. Once they hear him onto them, they're probably going to wake up, grab a brush, and put on a little makeup. People are trying to find new ways to make money because inflation is getting so high. And it's probably going to get worse in a few months. Food could even get more expensive in the fall. This is because cost increases affect farmers first as they grow food. They don't see a profit until their items are sold several months later. And to see a profit, the asking price on food will be raised even higher than it already is. So if you want to save money, load up on groceries now. Yes, this salad is eight months old. What, you think I can afford new vegetables? What am I, a Rockefeller? Now eat your carrots or cockroaches, whatever those are. Electricity prices will also increase in the coming months and may continue increasing for a lot longer, which means many Americans may not be able to afford to keep their lights on. And many already can't afford to fill their tanks with gas, which means we're going green, baby. You're welcome, Mother Earth. Pretty soon, America is going to be greener than the vegetables we can still afford to eat. But don't worry, the Federal Reserve is here to rescue us. Their solution? Increase interest rates. Again, they've increased interest rates multiple times this year, which should be slowing down inflation, including in the housing market. But that hasn't stopped the cost of houses from rising more than 20% year on year, with no sign of prices dropping. The problem is that if mortgages are more expensive now with higher interest rates and housing prices still don't drop, then no one can afford houses, except for BlackRock. So to try and prevent people from not being able to afford food and gas, the Fed is going to make it harder for people to buy a home. This is like trying to prevent athlete's foot by cutting off all your toes. I mean, it works. The reason for raising interest rates is, it worked in the past, we think. 40 years ago, when inflation was in double digits, the Federal Reserve, led by this guy, ratcheted up interest rates as high as 20%. That caused a nationwide recession. Twice. But eventually it reigned in the crazy inflation and things returned to normal. You know, normal inflation, where you only lose a little bit of your money each year. On Tuesday, President Biden met with the chairman of the Federal Reserve to discuss what options they have for fighting inflation. Hopefully he came out of that meeting with all of his toes. This is the first time Biden has met with the chairman as he said he didn't want to give the impression he was telling the Fed what they should and shouldn't do. My plan to address inflation starts with simple proposition. Respect the Fed, respect the Fed's independence. Which is commendable given that the Fed is an independent entity that shouldn't be swayed by political bias. But I'm also not sure the Fed has been making great decisions on its own. At this point, I'd be willing for them to take advice from anyone including this adult toy company that licensed the monster from Stranger Things. Even they seem to have better business sense than the Fed. Of course, it's hard to tell if Biden actually means what he says. The statements are often walked back by the White House. According to reports, this is frustrating the president, who thinks it makes him look weak. In response to this, the White House said, what the president meant to say was we're doing a bang up job and are probably all in line for another raise. Okay, Mr. President, here's some warm milk. Time for your nappy nap. 
More after the break. Welcome back. The EU has agreed to ban about 90% of imports of Russian oil. This was a compromise after Hungary said they were still dependent on it. So the ban is on Russian oil that arrives by sea, but not pipeline oil. This 90% ban will make things more challenging for the EU, but it's a small price to pay for a clean conscience. At least now they'll only be getting oil from countries that don't commit any crimes against humanity, like Saudi Arabia. The downside of the EU oil ban is that it's caused global oil prices to rise. Because, of course it did. Everything these days makes oil prices rise. War with Russia? Oil prices rise. Stock markets crash? Oil prices rise. Johnny Depp wins damages from Amber Heard? Oil prices rise. So how is Russia reacting to this oil ban? The Russian permanent representative to international organizations in Vienna tweeted that Russia will find other importers, and the president of the EU commission contradicted herself, and the EU is not in good shape. Is it just me, or does he sound like someone going through a bad breakup? I'll find someone even better than you. You don't even know what you want. Also, I hate your mom. According to a report from the International Atomic Energy Agency, Iran has obtained enough uranium to make a nuclear weapon. President Biden has been trying to get America to rejoin the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, which former President Trump pulled the U.S. out of in 2018. Given this revelation, many think Biden will have to quit in his efforts at rejoining the deal. To which Biden replied, Go ahead and make as many nukes as you want, Iran. See if I care. To which the White House immediately clarified, He didn't mean that. He's just cranky. Joe, what have we told you about giving speeches before your nappy nap? For decades, everyone's been petrified of Iran obtaining a nuclear weapon. But given the last few years, half the planet sees this and Kim Jong-un posturing with nukes, and it's probably like, go ahead, I dare you. What are you gonna do? Make this apocalypse we've been living in even apocalypsier? You're not afraid of us having nukes? Ah, forget it, what's the point then? If you want any more proof we're living in a weird apocalypse, the FDA and CDC are investigating a hepatitis A outbreak that could have come from organic strawberries. The strawberries in question are Fresh Campo and HEB brand. While the potentially tainted strawberries are believed to be past their expiration date, authorities warn that anyone with frozen strawberries from these distributors should throw them away. On the bright side, in a few months, you won't have to worry about tainted food anymore since you won't be able to afford any food. And after the break, the larger fallout from the latest school shooting. Welcome back. The Justice Department will launch a probe into the police response to the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. The Uvalde Police Department has been heavily criticized, so has the Uvalde School District's Police Department. Their story changed multiple times, and they waited for nearly an hour for other agencies to arrive to breach a barricaded door and confront the shooter in the rooms where all the victims were killed. That was reportedly because they thought it had turned from an active shooter into a hostage situation. How did they not know what was happening even as people in the classroom were calling 911? According to one Texas state senator, the school district's police chief was not getting those 911 calls. So it seems like a lot of things went wrong, but there's still a lot we don't know. With all the stories that are out there, it'll be nice to get to the bottom of this. And while the Justice Department is looking into inept, dishonest public servants who are terrible at their jobs, take too long to act during an emergency, and offer no assistance whatsoever, maybe they can also investigate Congress. The school shooting in Uvalde has also set off a new round of debate over gun laws. This has led to stocks in firearm and ammunition companies to rise. Because guns are the only industry in America that's recession-proof. It's a shame we can't fill our gas tanks with bullets. That would be the most American thing ever. When guns are used in a mass shooting, it typically makes gun sales go up. This would be like if when Chipotle had salmonella outbreaks, their profits soared and people rushed out to buy even more because they were afraid Biden's gonna take my burrito bowls. When pressed to do something about gun violence, President Biden said, I can do the things I've done, and any executive action I can take, I'll continue to take. But I can't outlaw a weapon. 
I can't change a background check. I can't do that. This argument will be on the president's upcoming Meatloaf cover album on the track, I would do anything for change, but I can't do that. But Biden said after this most recent school shooting, he believes he'll be able to work with some rational Republicans. And one of these rational Republicans Biden referred to is Mitch McConnell. You know, the guy who said he's 100% focused on stopping Biden's administration. This is like the three little pigs going to negotiate with the big bad wolf and saying, I've got a good feeling about this. So Biden hopes he can work with these rational Republicans, as opposed to the irrational Republicans. That is, the ones who can't be expressed as the ratio of two rational Republicans. I can't tell if that was the dumbest smart joke or the smartest dumb joke I've ever told. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut shares the president's optimism. Every single time after one of these mass shootings, um, there's talks in Washington and they never succeed. But there are more Republicans interested in talking about finding a path forward this time than I have ever seen since Sandy Hook. So he's saying they're doing the same thing they've always done, but are expecting different results. That's literally the definition of insanity. Put that on Senator Murphy's background check. I don't think this guy should be allowed to have a gun. But in the wake of the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, gun control might actually be implemented in Canada. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is proposing a bill that would freeze ownership of handguns, using a tragedy in another country to justify laws in your own seems a bit odd, doesn't it? That'd be like if the US made it illegal for citizens to invade Ukraine. Thanks, Putin. Way to ruin it for the rest of us. There go my 4th of July plans. This isn't quite a ban on handguns, since people who already own handguns would be allowed to keep them. In Canada, citizens need to go through a rigorous process to obtain and be allowed to legally keep handguns. This bill aims to make it impossible to sell, buy, or import handguns anywhere in the country going forward. To which American smugglers at the border said, challenge accepted. So if you already own a handgun when this law goes into effect in Canada, you can keep it. And if you want one, you're going to have to buy it quick, which means the gun industry in Canada may soon make more money than the gun industry in the U.S. for the first time ever. Trudeau is also looking to ban possession of what he calls military-style assault weapons and require citizens to turn theirs into a government buyback program. Trudeau said he plans to do this because, other than using firearms for sport shooting and hunting, there is no reason anyone in Canada should need guns in their everyday lives. So his plan is to literally come and take their guns. Between this and his other authoritarian measures, Trudeau is like the fantasy version of Obama that Republicans were scared of for years. The only difference is he doesn't look that much like Obama, although he has tried. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Or join our exclusive censorship-free social media community on Locals. Check out americauncovered.locals.com. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.